All right, welcome back to the calculator program. This is version three. We're going to implement a command line interface. So this assumes you've watched the previous videos where you created version one, which had hard-coded values for the operation and the two numbers. And then you also watched version two of the video showing how we prompted for the number one, number two, and the operation here. This example shows our goal. We want from the command line to be able to type, for example, 10 plus 10 and have it display the answer. So that's where we're headed for this one, uh, 10 plus 10. And um, let's, let's just uh, jump right into it. So I'm starting with our previous version 2. Just as a reminder, when we run version 2, it prompts us for the first number. You enter that. It prompts us for the operation. Enter that prompts us for the second number, and it performs that particular operation. Well, for this version three, I want to be able to from the command line go. For example, what I what I just did, I want to be able to get say ten space star space twenty, and when I press enter, I actually want to see the same thing on starting with the OK and then basically show there, as opposed to it prompts us. So, let's look at how we can do that. Step one, go to where you have main. And we did this in a previous video, a previous lesson. We said that by default, this main function, which we know your C code starts executing at this main function, we know that by default, nothing goes in and it returns an integer. However, instead of using that default, and I'll, I'll put it as a reminder, that's what the default was, but we can instead say main integer argc and a character pointer argv array, which I realize is very confusing, but just hang in there, we'll get to it. Uh, first, we're going to look, so, so we've got two inputs, uh, one that's kind of strange looking. It, it's actually a vector. V stands for vector, and it's a, a vector is more than one, uh, of, often called an array of strings. Anyway, this argc tells us how many arguments are entered on the command line. So just for test purposes, Let's do this, and again, this will be just for testing. Let's say um, printf argc percent d backslash n and print out argc. All right, just for testing. And in fact, when we run this, notice it says argc is one. Well, what that means there was a single argument, and that argument is the name of the program. If I uh, click on stop and come here to the command line. Click on this and say period slash main 10 times 10 and press enter. Notice it says there were five arguments. One, two, three, four. So, and actually, um, so one, two, three, four. So it must have picked up the um, other one as well. I'm actually surprised it's saying it's not saying let's do that. So main. So there's one argument. Oh, I know what. Ah, very, very tricky here. Again, this shows the value of running things uh, live, right, as opposed to just looking at slides. The shell treats the star as basically expanded to show everything. So here's what that means was happening here. If I do an ls, the star says show the, these two values. That's what star basically substitutes in. So we'd have one, two, three, four, and it would put this in as well. Right, we've already got this one, the main is the, the first one there, but it also substituted this. So without going in a lot of detail, here's how we're going to have to do this. 
we're going to have to say um, main and 10 and I'm going to have to put in single quotes single quotes and that basically tells the the shell which is looking at this it says do, use this as a character don't try to expand it and so that indeed has the four that I was expecting all right so the the single quotes again say don't try to expand this special character let me click on uh, let's do another one here let me uh, click on run and then let me click on stop let me uh, clear the screen so what we want to do is when I run this if I just run it normally we know that the argument count is one um, and, and that way it'll prompt me. But if the argument count is not one, in fact, we're looking for the argument count to be four, then we will do something else. So we have to make a decision. So let's, let's take the case of argument count equals one. Let's come down here. We know, based on our logic, only if the argument count is one do we want to enter these inputs. So let's do this. Let's say... If 1 is exactly equal to the arg count, right? So this tells us we've only entered uh, just the command. And be careful on this. I'm going to put the open curly brace, but it, the environment will automatically put both of them there. But I'm going to delete the second one. And the reason is this is the beginning of this if statement, the open curly brace says, okay, it begins here. Let's press the tab key. Press the tab key. Come down here. Uh, press the tab key. The indention is important. It's showing that all of this that I'm tabbing over is part of this if statement. So again, I will tab over here, tab over here, tab over here tab over here, tab over here, tab over here, and then this OK, I want it to always print out. So again, and be very careful on this, our if statement, and you, you can notice how you can expand it and contract it like this. The reason it's able to do that is because it knows the open curly brace and the ending clip. Uh, curly brace. So all this is part of this if statement. In fact, if I run my code right now, it should work just like it did work. So I could say 10, a star, and 10, and that works as we expected. Right? This is the case. It works as expected. However, we also want to take this case if we say main 10, and remember, you're going to have to put single quotes and, and notice I'm also putting spaces around each one of these so you need spaces we also want this to work so if the R count is equal to one we're going to do this and we've just proven that now be careful on this else we're going to do something else in other words if we will do this, else we're going to do this. And I'm going to say to do, or I'll say note, assume four arguments. In other words, just for simplification for this particular exercise, is if we get here, I'm going to assume you've typed in four arguments which may or may not be true in this case, but for just to simplify for right now. Um, so here's what we want to do. The key to remember, and, and again, I realize this is hard to understand and, and new, but remember here in our main, right here, we have something called argv. So watch this. 
if I say, and this is for test purposes, testing, I'm going to say printf argv of 0, argv of 0, as a percent %s backslash n argv of 0. Now before I do anything else, let me just run this one thing. And in fact, I'm going to click on stop. Come over here to the command line, period slash, and I'm going to say 10 star 10. And notice right here, argv of 0 is actually main. Argv of 0 is main. And in fact, if I copy and paste this, remember this is just for testing purposes. I'm going to copy it two more times. So paste it here and paste it here. And watch this. If I change this to a 1, to a 2, and to a 3. And the same thing here. 1, 2, and 3. Uh, think of this if you have, uh, let's say you're at, let's say you're at an apartment and you see a bunch of mailboxes for all the apartments. This could be four mailboxes and you either go to the mailbox zero, mailbox one, mailbox two, or mailbox three. They all are holding mail, but depending on which one you go to, you get different types of mail. Well, in this case, depending on which one we go to, we get different types of arguments. So watch this. I'm going to click on Run. I'll then just click on Stop. To, to, that way I know it compiled it. And here I'm going to say period slash main 10 star 10 and press Enter. And I want you to notice the arguments are listed out. Check that out. Main 10 star and 10. Cool. So we actually took this path. We took this path. Now if we take this path, here's all we have to do. And um, for learning purposes, I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to say the number 1, the number 1 is equal to a2i of argv of 1. So this gets this gets number one. Okay, this gets number one. Now remember, we know by now, when you see this, implicit declaration. What does implicit declaration mean? We're missing a header file. We're missing a header file. So let's go on up and say, all right, we're going to pound include Let's try standardlib.h. So standardlibrary.h. Standardlibrary.h. And let's scroll back down. See if that see if that helped us out. Cool. ASCII to integer. What this says is going to take this ASCII value right here and convert it into an integer. That is, convert it from this human readable character one zero into a integer number one and you know what let's do the same thing with number the the other number I'll say number two equals ASCII to I argv this one would be of two or actually of three so that takes care of that one so the only problem we've got then is this this guy so we'll say the operation is going to equal to argv of 2. Right, we've got argv of 2. But within here, we want, and this is going to be really confusing to you, but just bear with me. We want to go to the second argument. So 0, 1, 2. And then we want to go into that argument, just get the first character. Now, if you don't quite follow this, that's okay. This, this is, you, you're actually, 
show, for the first time in this course, this is what's called a multi-dimensional array. You're actually seeing the argument and then you're indexing into the argument. But in any case, let's go ahead and click on run. Oh, oh, whoa, uh oh, uh oh, got some errors. Let's see, conflicting types. Oh, looks like I, um, well, you know, let's, let's follow it. So line number 30, so I go to line number 30. Line number 30, I don't even think we did anything up there, did we? So line number 30, um, when I position, conflicting types for div. Ah, conflicting types. Look, previous declaration is here. Extern div t div. Wow. This is fantastic. This is the best thing about these videos where you, right, you run into these things that you could very well run in as well. It's, it's, it's so great seeing a live, uh, well, it's recorded, but I'm doing it live as it's recording and see these errors. Well, when we look at this error message, it basically says conflicting types. In other words, when we included this header file, it already has something called div. It already has something called div. So it conflicts with something that's already there. So let's change this. Instead of calling it div, let's call it divide. Let's just name our function divide. Okay, so we, we change the name of the function. And of course, that means down here where we call it, we should also change the name of the function. So here, call it divide. And then let's click on run, why that compiles it. In fact, we, let's make sure we didn't break anything. So 10 star 10. Okay, that works. But how about if we do it like this? Main 10. And remember, put your single quote 10. Cool. Look at that. It worked. Let's do it again from the command line. Main. Uh, how about 10, let's do the uh, divide by 3, cool, we divide, we did the division, how about the remainder, let's do period slash main, 10, how about remainder, uh, 3, ah, remainder of 1, we got it, let's do one more maybe, main, how about 10, um, Let's see, we did, how about the addition? Again, put in the single quote, say uh, 10. Cool, we got it. So of this example, I, I realize the key thing is within this else statement. But remember, you can run the code multiple times. You can play with it. Our code also has a bug in that we're assuming four arguments. And so here's what I mean by that. Suppose we said main and we just typed in 10 and nothing else. And I press enter. Notice segmentation fault, core dumped. So we actually have an error in our code. I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Uh, this video is getting a little too long as it is, but uh, if you don't type in enough, <laughs> we're gonna have a runtime error. But if you do it correctly, right, the good thing is if you do it correctly, 10, um, how about we do the uh, remainder of 3, and we see we got it working. So we have what's called a CLI command line interface. So thanks for making it this far. Another milestone, uh, super important that you understand version 1, version 2, and version 3 of this calculator program. More to come in the next video. As always, I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.